Well, here we are. It is Friday, uh, December 9th, 2022, and this is the Friday video, the weekly video, where we go through and <clears throat> take a look at the auction market uh, around the world, see what prices have been, what, what's been happening. Uh, uh, the, the big auction houses are a little quiet right now, and they will be until after the new year. Uh, many auction houses do very little in December, especially in the U.S. There are a few. Uh, and as we saw this week, prices uh, for a couple of auction houses that usually do very well uh, were pretty soft. And I think that's largely due to the time of year. It happens, seems to happen every, every, every year between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Uh, as many of you know, we talked about it last year, the year before. <clears throat> There's a softening of prices during this time because people aren't paying attention. People are doing other things. They got kids coming home from college. They're getting ready to make travel uh, arrangements, or they're they're heading off to places. They got other things they're doing, and that slight drop in participation has a big impact on how things are going. And we're going to go through some of the prices from the uh, from the global member pages of, of results that we saw uh, uh, just this past week that that, that sort of make that point. Uh, so if you're if you're a subscriber, you know what I'm talking about because you saw what happened, uh, and there were a number of sales that had some great things in them. But before we get too far into it, um, uh, I wanted to mention we did add an interesting book to the uh, reference section over in the research department here. Uh, you all know where it is, but I, I always mention how to get there for anybody that's new that comes along. Um, if you come to the bitamount.com homepage, scroll down. Um, to the to these boxes that have links to all over the place auction houses museum collections and all that there's one for in the red box for catalogs and books and uh, in here we keep uh, an archive of, uh, of of past auction houses uh, reference books and things right now there are 737 um, uh, uh, books and catalogs in there. Uh, earlier this week, we went through because we found a couple of times where we accidentally uploaded twice for some reason. I don't know why. So we cleaned those out. So if you've if you've in the past noticed, you see two two identical uh, Christie's covers, two rows apart. That's that's why they got they got caught up in the wrong processing on our end, and we took them out. But anyway, and I'm sure there might be a couple more, but not many. <laughs> maybe maybe two or three others. Uh, but right here at the top of the of the book section is um, this book. And uh, it's a really interesting story. The title is pretty drab. It's a university uh, paper. Um, and it's, it's, the title is Made for Trade, um, uh, Made in China, Chinese Export Paintings in Dutch Collections. And it is a fairly long book. It's 289 pages. It's full of information, uh, lots of stories, background stuff on, on, the, on the artists that worked in Hong Kong, uh, Bu Kwa and Sun Kwa and all the, all the notables. They even have these really great photographs. There's even a terrific photograph that was taken um, in uh, China in the 1860s of a, a Chinese artist um, a, a copying a photograph for the export market. In other words, somebody had sent him a uh, daguerreotype or something, and he's copying it into a painting. And that's what they did. And there are other scenes of them here in these little workshops working away. And they were, of course, superb painters. Uh, there still are very, it's, you know, very fine painters there today. But these, these export, these trade painters um, did amazing work. And uh, this is a heck of a well-written paper. And it shows different examples, pith paintings, watercolors, oils, um, and, and all of that. It's a, I think it's a, a very, very good paper. Really good, a good, a good book. All right, so uh, check that out, all right? I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, and what else was going on? Um, many of you uh, that use the Global Pages saw this sale that we added <clears throat> because Bukowski doesn't really um, advertise a heck of a lot. And uh, we had put this bowl up on the homepage to sort of alert the uh, users uh, that this was on there. And uh, we had it up there for a few days. Then we, we swapped it out for something else that came along, but it was there. And this was the auction. This was the link to it. And if you clicked on it, uh, it would bring you over here to their site. There we are. And uh, the, the auction took place, I guess, yesterday, right? Uh, December 7th through the 9th. It finished up yesterday and or, or finished up earlier there's i think there's one leg left of some part of it today but the chinese stuff is all done and uh there were some really interesting pieces if you're a blue and white collector especially uh some really interesting ming pieces now the prices here are all in um uh, swedish coronas 
uh, just so you know. So it's it, it's uh, uh, the exchange rate is about uh, I think it's around uh, about ten to one to the dollar, somewhere around there. So uh, when we look at the prices, you'll you'll have a, a better sense of um, um, what we're uh, talking about. But uh, there were some absolutely great examples in here. There was this very nice Wanli incense burner that brought 140,000 um, SEK. Uh, that works out to I guess around 10 or 15 thousand dollars. There's this vase. Uh, my 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 favorite thing in the sale though was this bowl. Um, I absolutely loved this bowl. I thought it was just a, a, a beautifully painted, um, lovely uh, elements. The designs were very tight. The uh, fill, and I love the expression of that poor hawk or that eagle sitting there with, the, with his crow tip down. Um, I don't think he's a parrot. I think he's a hawk or some sort of predator, but uh, just a, a very nicely done bowl. Um, beautiful layout. Just, just, I thought this was just great. It's not a fancy imperial piece, but it's absolutely beautiful, and it was good size. Uh, it was almost a foot wide. It was almost a, it was about ten inches, eleven inches in diameter, and uh, and it ended up uh, selling for sixty five thousand sek, and uh, so that's about six thousand, roughly around six thousand dollars, I guess, something like that. And uh, they had other pieces in here. They had this very attractive jar uh, that I uh, caught my eye. I thought this was an awfully nice piece of Kung Chi porcelain um, with this blue ground that they blow on. They blow the cobalt. They get this texture by blowing through straws, through tubes, um, the cobalt powder onto the body. So it goes like this. So it doesn't form a solid, opaque mass. It has areas of light and dark. It's a wonderful effect. And then they, they, they mask off areas um, like this up here, maybe using wax or something like this, so they can have a, a cartouche to decorate. And then, of course, they can take it off with heat. Uh, but uh, there's the jar. It was a nice looking pot. And there was a couple old stickers on the bottom. Uh, it wasn't especially big. It wasn't an enormous jar. I think it was around, uh, uh, I, th I think it was around 10 inches or so tall. Um, and uh, it ended up selling fine. It sold for five fifty thousand SEK, which is around four or five thousand dollars. But a beautiful piece of porcelain. This was a really lovely, lovely jar. The lid wasn't old. This lid is you know twentieth century modern, uh, but but it suits the purpose. I'd prefer it a little darker, but that that's just me being being critical. <laughs> and uh, lots of other examples. Some very nice Ming wares. Uh, there was this very nice charger, Long Quan Celadon charger that went through for uh, about forty-two thousand SEK, which is around three or four thousand dollars. All of the prices I thought were very reasonable, if not a little bit on the soft side. Um, there was this uh, a, a very nice uh, uh, Kangxi plate sold for sixteen thousand or about sixteen hundred dollars or so, and so forth. Um, and uh, on and on and on. And there were there were a few surprises. Uh, but uh, the yellow wares did well, uh, the, the bronzes did okay, but none of, none of the prices what I call very strong, like we've seen during the rest of the year. And I don't think it was because the stuff wasn't known, I think it's just because um, the people that are, that are bidders, like I said, they're taking some time off, they're on vacation. All right. And uh, it's, it's, it's as easy as that. Uh, this was sort of an interesting piece, it had uh, some later aspects added to it, like the, the wooden... Um, Hold on a second. There it goes. Um, the, 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 the wooden lid and base that were made for it, because this was a porcelain box that's missing its upper section, it would appear. But because um, uh, that does, this is not an old carving, that doesn't have any age to it. But very nicely done Ming box. And, and they adapted it over to go onto this stand, which I think is terrific. And uh, let's see here. Wan Lee Mark and Period ended up selling um, for 145,000 SEK, which is about 15 or so thousand dollars. If it had the lid with this Wan Lee thing on it, it would have brought 100, 100 to 150,000 uh, US. These are very rare, um, uh, these dragon boxes, but uh, at least somebody preserved it. Here's a picture of the base of it. Um, Looks absolutely right as rain. Uh, pay close attention to how the paste looks on the feet of this thing, uh, on the foot. Uh, this is what it should look like. It should be this color white and should have a little may, occasional bits of kiln grit on it because it is one Lee, um, which was uh, often, often appears on these pieces. It's got an old label on it. And you don't always pay attention to labels because they don't necessarily mean anything. But in this case, it's completely true and correct. And you'll notice there's a decided blue tinge to the bottom. 
that's that's bluer than the than the, than the exterior glaze. And this is because they added a little extra blue to the glaze when they were glazing it up um, into the white glaze to give it these blue pools. Uh, very similar in tone to what you see on uh, Qing Bai wares from the Song Dynasty, that kind of thing. That's how they did that. And here it is. What's the sticker here to, down here say? Hold on. I didn't even see that before. Oh, it's from a collection in st something in Stockholm. It's an old Stockholm collection label underneath a bit of glue. <laughs> uh, but that that's what you see on old pieces from old collections fairly often. Anyway, uh, the Bukowski sale was a good auction and it posed a real opportunity for someone uh, to come along and pick up uh, and really fill in some holes in their blue and white collection in particular. Uh, there were other pieces, as I mentioned in here, there was some Sunkai where the Wutsai and um, all, all that other business, some monochromes, but it was a nice auction. And um, uh, somebody emailed me about it. Uh, one of our, one of the viewers out here, this, the, the, I think it must have been about the day the, the auction appeared. And he said, have you seen the Bukowski sale? And um, they don't always pop onto our radar because they, they don't use live auctioneers. And they're, they're, they, they, they have very limited internet marketing, it seems. Um, so it's it's so in those kinds of cases, it's worth getting to uh, 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 reach out to them and, and do this. And we've seen nice things through here in the past. If you Google use Google Image Search often, you'll see lots of things for Bukowski turning up uh, authentic items, and they, they it gives a very positive impression of of what they do and so forth. All right, now over to uh, other sales that ended in the last few days. Now here we're going to look at some things I think that were steals. And I had mentioned this rug in particular on the on the global member video a couple of weeks ago. Is this really nice Chinese uh, uh, Indo? They call it Indo Chinese. I don't know why they call it Indo. It's, it looks like it's woven in China to me. But at any rate, um, sometimes they just. I think this is Heinemann's or something, and they and they sometimes get the terminology a little fouled up. But at any rate, this was a really pretty carpet. Um, if you if you've been if you if you if you look for if you're looking for a Chinese rug to put in your home a nice Chinese carpet because for some reason Chinese rugs in general um, sell for a lot less money than Persian rugs in general and I don't know why um, they're better made uh, in many cases the colors are stupendously beautiful here you have this rug with all these light and dark tones of uh, tan uh, very nice arbor they call it an arbrash effect and then these 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 medallions of flowers and so forth running around it uh, and this was an enormous rug this was a very big carpet there are the colors the colors all look great on it it's not a very very old rug it was I, there I think they're right on the dating made around 1900 could have been made in 1915 or something but it was 13 by 17 feet and if you do the square footage on that um it's this was a very very big rug uh you know over 200 240 or so square feet of rug in other words it is it is uh around um um what uh in square footage it's around five times the size of a five by eight for example or a six by nine um, the, because rugs, ex, the square footage of rugs exponentially expands, and uh, sometimes people say, "Well, a ten by a ten by twelve is almost the same size as a thirteen by 17. No, it's not. It's not even close in footage. It's the, the thirteen by seventeen is double the size in square footage of a ten by twelve, um, and 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 to have it sell for this uh, uh, thirty seven hundred and fifty dollars was an absolute steal. This was a great buy. This was a really, really, really good buy. Um, if you want to do the math on it, if it was a if it was a nine by twelve, the, um, this rug theoretically, based on square footage, would have ended up selling for um, around fourteen hundred dollars, which of course is is very inexpensive. But um, uh, th this was a great buy. The shipping is a little expensive on it because it's heavy. Uh, it weighs um, 100, almost one hundred pounds. It was a big rug, thick, very good quality wool. I'm sure they always do. Uh, but uh, pay attention to, when you're looking at rugs and calculating things and costs and comparing if you're working with a budget um, uh, use the square foot method always look at square footage of the rug and what it ends up selling for uh, just as a guide it doesn't necessarily mean anything there are rugs and uh, certainly carpets and textiles that are very small that sell for tens of thousands of dollars per square foot depending on the age and where it came from but this was a, a very very pretty rug in closing all right, and then this, this was also at Heinemann's. This was a steal. Um, this was a big jar, and you recognize that it's a late Ming wine jar, Guan, 
with its cover. Um, it said there's areas of yellowing on it that indicate maybe it had been restored. And it doesn't always necessarily mean it's been restored. And sometimes they used, um, uh, uh, they, would, they would send stuff to the restorer for just to cover up a hairline and they would overspray the piece with paint and, and over decorate it um, just to cover up a, a small hairline. So uh, uh, on pots like this, if, if it looks like it's, it's had some uh, work done to it, uh, look inside, look for, look for other places uh, for hints. But no matter what, this was a great buy. These jars normally sell with the lid uh, for, oh, anywhere from $4,000 to $7,000, depending on the sale. And often with hairlines in them, it doesn't seem to make a heck of a big difference. But at any rate, this was a 20-inch tall jar. It was estimated very modestly at $1,000 to $1,500. Ended up selling for $1,000. Um, that was a good buy for $1,000, even if it's got some restoration here and there. It's a very, very good buy. It's a 16th century jar. And as I said, prices were soft um, this past week. This is what we saw. And then this, this really nice um, ink and watercolor uh, painting of a tiger. Extremely atmospheric. It looks like a late 19th or early, uh, late 18th or early 19th century painting. Beautifully done. Beautiful expressions. Nice colors. Very expensive frame. Um, with this French mat running around the inside, inscribed. It's got age to it. It's got some wear up here in the sky and so forth. But this was a good size painting. Um, it measured uh, th uh, uh, 30, the image of the painting itself, excluding the frame, was 30 wide by 54 high. So it was four feet tall um, and not including the frame. So that's a, that's a nice big painting to hang. Um, and the colors are extremely appealing, whether you know anything about Chinese or Japanese or Asian art at all. It's just a very appealing work of art. And uh, it went for $550 with an eight to $1,200 estimate. And I had, a couple of people had asked about it uh, on the idea identification assistance service. And I said, if you really like that, you may get it for under 600 bucks. Uh, and the reason is, is that uh, uh, a lot of people don't understand them and they, they don't want to deal with the shipping of it because paintings are a little bit expensive to ship. But if you're in the United States, you could ship this for, uh, oh, anywhere in the country for a few hundred dollars. Uh, it may cost you three or four hundred bucks to get it shipped, but it's a fantastic painting. And I, and I, I think, you know, we were, we, the other day we did the video on decorating. Um, um, here, here is a painting that just screams for a decorator to buy it. Um, and, and, and may have sold to a decorator, I don't know. Uh, but but uh, it's the kind of painting that a decorator will put into a job somewhere and they charge six or eight thousand dollars for this. And I'm not exaggerating. They basically add a zero on to whatever it sells for. And that's that's sort of you're getting into the ballpark, all right, for what some decorators charge. So you want to um, keep that in mind when you see interior. We we're going to talk more about interior decorating and design because I think it's I think that the whole idea of decorating one's home should be left to the, the homeowner and, and your personal interests and not just to be turned over and write a check and let somebody else do it for you. It's like it ends up like living at a Hyatt Regency or something. All right, um, and I'll gripe more about that as we go along because the more I think about it, the more it annoys me. <laughs> uh, and then we have this, the Chinese uh, moon flask. As you, everybody has seen these before. These were big ones, though. These were 21 inches tall. These were very big flasks. And uh, I, in the past, we've seen uh, singles of this size sell for $3,700. So again, um, I don't know where everybody was, why nobody was paying attention to this, but these were very, very large. Um, beautiful Phil Bill June uh, enamels, uh, decorated up uh, front with figures and then on the back with these uh, beautiful pheasants um, and so forth. But the enamels were good. They looked like they were in, in very good shape. I couldn't see any damage to them. Um, and uh, all done and in, they were ended up probably with the buyer's premium, ended up around $4,500 for the pair. And uh, th I think this is a, a very good buy. These were big, 21 and a half inches tall, 15 inches wide. So these were like, you know, these were big boys. And um, somebody got a great buy again. Holiday season shopping, all right. And then there was this, the 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 the, 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 the they call it sunspot bronzes. I don't know who, who Eldred's called it that. It's the gilt gilt splash bronzes. This was apparently deaccessioned from an institution here, maybe in New England. The MFA sometimes deaccessions stuff like this uh, if they've got duplicates because they have an enormous bronze collection. But this is a nice one, um, a good looking bronze. All right, who's this calling? Oh, somebody for my wife. 
<laughs> any rate, um, and here's the bottom of it and so forth. And, I, and it was, uh, how big was it? It was nine inches tall. This wasn't an enormous vase. It scaled like one. This is this is a form that you see in much bigger vases, 16, 18 inches tall. This one was nine inches tall, but really, really finely done. And um, for the gilt splashed bronze crowd, this is is this is good looking splash to me. Uh, um, the way it's done, thickly done, very good details on the masks. Uh, a, a really nice example. And, and it ended up going for ten thousand dollars, which is which is about right. It's right. That wasn't a steal, but it was it wasn't an overpayment by any stretch. All right, and then they had this robe here, this dragon robe, um, uh, late 19th century. It's a probably a Guangxu period robe, uh, nicely done uh, with with this. You know, it's pretty standard decoration, it's pretty typical dragons. There was nothing outstanding about this robe, other than it being a nice example, and it appeared to be in quite good condition. I didn't notice a lot of fraying. I didn't see a lot of staining behind the collar. There might have been a little fraying along this band here because that that type of silk with the metal, they have metal threads. In them and they they tend to get caught because it's on a flap that opens and closes so forth so that can happen but overall this was a very pretty there's a good color of it there we are Here, here's a, a better look at the colors I, I thought the colors on the other pictures looked a little muted that's what it looks like so it had a very nice clean blue um, nice looking gilded uh, threads on it the reds hadn't faded yet or anything it was it wasn't a stupendous robe but a very good one and, and it ended up selling for well with the buyer's premium it comes out to about uh, a, a little under around eight thousand dollars roughly but nice looking nice looking robe and then this was also at uh, stair gallery was this very nice uh, Ming period Lung Quan Celadon um, uh, warming bowl or alms bowl um, nice glaze on it, very thickly glazed, good looking interior. The bottom of it looks absolutely fine. That's what it should look like. Um, and uh, it went for just $1,200. That was an excellent buy. Um, the estimate was very low, I thought, and I think the selling price was very low. And again, this is holiday shopping, uh, stair gallery. And we're going to look at a few examples, I think, from stair to see what happened, okay? Um, there was this, a really nice, again, it's stair, this beautiful Yongchen period um, Famille Rose uh, charger. It was around 12 and a half inches in diameter. Beautiful painting. Um, I think it, this came from the Tibor collection originally, which was a famous collection of export wares. Uh, very finely enameled, nowhere, good clear yellow. Uh, Love the phoenix sort of squiggling down out of the sky. And then you have the maidens and, and the gentleman on the uh, veranda and this very nice uh, inner cavetto with the pink and, and the cartouches and then interspersed interesting. Normally you just see them with the with these with this repeat pattern and then these cartouches. And here the, the artist splashed in extra flowers alternating with yellow and, and, and rose and then these sprays around the rim. This was a nice looking piece of porcelain. Um, there's the back of it exactly the way it should look. And I didn't see anything wrong with it. Maybe it had a hairline or something, but it was estimated at a reasonable thousand to fifteen hundred dollars, and it went for just eight hundred plus premium. Um, and this this was a bargain. That was an absolute steal uh, for a piece of this quality um, and in this condition and with such good decoration. It's always about the art. It's about the about the work. And that was a very nice piece. And then they had this. This was nice if you were an iron red buyer. This was a steal. Uh, a nice looking pair of Mandarin scene um, uh, orange uh, or, 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 or what do they call it? Red sepia or orange sepia um, decoration with gilding. Uh, and, and you see this pattern most often in Famille Rose. But occasionally they did it in this orange uh, iron red uh, decoration against white. It's very effective. It works beautifully. And uh, somebody bought the pair. Um, at Stair Gallery for $200. That was cheap. That was a good buy. That was a good buy. All right. And then this, this was an interesting buy, and I'm, uh, I was shocked it didn't bring more money. Now, it was repaired, but it was a very nice piece of export wear for the Persian market. Here's the back of it. It uh, looks to be a late 18th, early 19th century piece from what I'm seeing. It obviously had been broken, but very rare uh, type. And beautifully uh, done, very restrained, uh, with, with a, a bit of Arabic in the center, and then this very, very pretty green. Now, you see this green often on Middle Eastern uh, market stuff, this, this soft, 
very, very pretty green. Uh, uh, it's, it, was, it just seemed to be a popular color um, on their export wares. And then this floral border gently running around the outside. This was a nice example and not an example you see often. You see them in museums occasionally, but that's about it. And it was big. It was 12 and a half inches wide. Uh, the estimate was five to 700. It, as I said, it had a, had a break to it, obviously, but it went for just $300. And that, that to me, is if you're a collector of interesting rare types, this was an interesting rare type. And I think the fact that it was damaged distracted uh, anybody uh, from really going after it, for, you know, always look at the object. Never think about, well, is it perfect? Well, okay, it's not perfect, but look at it. It's a great thing. Um, you know, if we if we threw out paintings every time they had needed restoration, it wouldn't be there wouldn't be anything left in the Louvre. <laughs> They're all restored. Everything in those, you know, this was something a lot of people don't realize is that almost no no paintings in any major museum over. Over 100 years old is 100% free of restoration, infilling, cleaning, repair, something. Just isn't. It isn't. It, they all have repairs and restoration. And I think, and we give that grace. It's fine because we recognize that things happen. And we, I'm hoping people get to that point with porcelain uh, because this, this, I think it's starting to happen because the, the phobia about porcelain is just silly. Be, well, it's not perfect. I don't want to own it. Well, you're a fool. All right. <laughs> Sorry. I'm getting cranky these days. Any anyway, rate, there was this, this cafe au lait in blue ground um, with a fish pattern on it. Um, this Kang Shi dish. This was very, very nice. They didn't date it as Kang Shi, but it was. And uh, as many of you know, these fish pattern pieces typically do bring a lot of money. And I had a couple of inquiries about this. Folks want to know what I thought. And I, I thought, you know, five to $7,000 because that's what they usually bring. Well, this one went through for a lot less than that. $2,500 plus the premium. The estimate was ridiculous. I don't know why, why they estimated it so low. And it had, you know, good background. It was sold by Gaston Gray and had been to Christie's once. Um, and it, this was also from the Tibor Collection. Tibor Collection was the, one of the best collections of, of Chinese porcelain in the world. Um, and uh, Gaston Gray are, are well-known, highly regarded dealers in Europe. They handle very good things. I, I, they're not, you know, they, they, they don't fool around. And, um, and, and of course, uh, Christie's uh, sold it in the, as part of the Tibor auction. So at any rate, 2,500 bucks plus the premium. So you're up around uh, 3,500 or so dollars for it, which I think was represents still an excellent value um, for what it is. And then there was this, this Kangxi period plate with these sprays of flowers. Now we've seen this pattern before in variants of it. But this one was particularly well done. Good use of negative space, nice clear enamels in very good condition. Very fine condition all the way around. Here's a picture of the back. Um, there's the side with the mukai uh, red flowers and so forth. Um, looked absolutely fine. Look at the price. $250 and um, it had a couple of minor areas of restoration and so forth. That's it, two hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, and this was this was how big was the plate? It was ten and a quarter, almost eleven inches wide. So this was a good sized plate, beautifully decorated. A couple of minor restorations, and two hundred and fifty dollars against a four to six hundred dollar estimate. And I thought the estimate was very reasonable, um, but I think two fifty is is even better. Of course, it's a, it was again a great buy for a beautiful object. And then this this went I think under the radar. Um, it was just really nice. It's a purple glaze and they just listed it as probably Chinese. Um, that's Chinese and it's, uh, looks to be probably, uh, judging by the, the, the potting. Um, and it's big. This was 16 inches tall. This was a very big vase with beautiful glazing on it. And, uh, it looks to me to be an 18th century vase, beautifully done and in great condition and very big and a rare color, purple glaze, um, 15 and a half inches tall. I thought it was 16 and a half, 15 and a half inches tall. Minor wear, heavily potted. Uh, the 18th century ones are quite heavy and stout. I've had Kang Shi ones in this shape um, and with turquoise glaze. Uh, and I had one uh, a number of years ago that was, uh, was 19 and a half inches tall. It was a very big one. I bought it in a group shop in New Hampshire for 75 bucks. <laughs> one, of my, one of the best buys I made that year. And I, I sold it to a very famous London dealer within minutes. But at any rate, um, this was a bargain. This was a very good buy. It's elegant, beautiful color, 
beautifully potted. The potting on this, the shape, um, and I think the color really leads to the shape looking um, so good. Uh, it really it gets your eye to focus on. It's very subtle because if there was anything wrong with the potting against this background, this thing would look awful. It would show up like crazy, uh, but it, it, it looks fine. And with the buyer's premium, it ended up being about $2,000, uh, $2,400 or $500, which was very, very inexpensive. I thought that was a great vase and a great buy. And uh, then over to this, the Ming Jar. This was at uh, Stair Gallery also. And we put this on the homepage um, for a few days uh, of the site for the global users to get their attention. Um, very nice Ming Dynasty Lotus Blossom, Lotus and Vine decorated uh, 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 lobed jar. Now we've seen these lobed jars before. They're fairly, they're not extremely rare. They're fairly common with these, with these lobed sides. But this pattern was particularly good. And, and it was particularly well drawn. You didn't have that that sort of hazy uh, blue that you sometimes got, get on these. If you've seen a lot of them, you'll know what I mean. Um, it's fairly crisp, fairly crisply done. And the outside of it looked absolutely fine. There's the bottom, uh, exactly how it should look. It's an old ex, old label on there. You can notice the trimming when they when because the because the body is lobed, it's shaped. You'll notice how it goes. The, the foot rim here it goes thick, and then it goes thin where the sides come in. Then it goes back out thick again, because trimming these is a little bit. Of, you have to be a little bit careful uh, because you don't want to you don't want to cut through and, and offset the base. You don't want to you don't want you want to break through that. You want to fo really follow that contour. Here he went in really close. He almost blew it when he was trimming this. You almost went in too far. Uh, so it's a, it's a real trick, and you don't see it very often. But that that's 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 what was going on there. And uh, this was sold. Oh, it's from Marchant um, <laughs> in uh, London. Uh, they're still there. They're one of the great dealers in the world. It was sold by Samuel Marchant. Um, that's an old label. It was pro looks like it's probably from the 1940s, something like that. Uh, 30s. At any rate, it was estimated at seven to nine thousand. It evidently didn't have much of a reserve on it, and it, the uh, let's see, the bid history started at. Let's see what happened here with the bids. Okay, starting price. Okay, they had an opening bid. They were requesting an opening bid apparently of thirty-five hundred prior to the sale starting, and then they dropped the opening bid to two thousand. And what that means is, is if you came along and you wanted to leave a bid on this prior to the start of the auction, you would have had to have left thirty-five hundred dollars. Uh, when the sale began, they dropped it, the opening bid to two thousand, and that of course probably gave a lot of people a lot of hope and excitement because they were probably interested in bidding at thirty-five hundred. So it got back up to the thirty-five hundred dollars here. Did two more increments and that was it. it was done, and uh, I think this was an excellent buy. A very very nice piece of porcelain, um, um, a well known form but fairly rare pattern and with good provenance. You know, there's nothing wrong with having Marchant labels on things. And it came from it had been exhibited at the oh the Herbert Johnson Museum at Cornell um, uh, or the Art of Cornell show in 1980. Um, that uh, I had know a little about that because uh, I bought. Um, from an auctioneer in upstate New York uh, a number of years ago. Um, uh, they deaccessioned a bunch of that porcelain and gave it to some local auctioneer in upstate New York. I think I may have mentioned this before. And the guy didn't know what the stuff was. He, he was a friend of the secretary that worked in the uh, dean's office. And she said, oh, you're looking to auction some stuff. Call my friend. He does auctions. And uh, he didn't do any real photography of it. And there was the edge of a bowl showing up in one of the photos. And I called him and said, what other Chinese stuff do you have? And he sent me a bunch of photographs. And there were 30 lots, and I bought every one of them, and, and it was including some stuff that was, had been bought um, from C.T. Lu, because they still had the C.T. Lu stickers on the bottom, a pair of very nice Chimlung Markin period offering dishes and so forth. And again, it went into, they just went into a sale, of, of an incidental sale of sort of country furniture. Um, he, he didn't put them on the Internet, and um, it was a very good day. <laughs> It was a very good way to buy them, but that sort of thing happens. So you want to always you keep your eye on small auction houses that are near old museums, because sometimes the old museum does really dumb stuff. And then there's this, this Pronk Arbor dish, a, a very desirable form. And those of you that use the global pages, uh, check it out, because there's another one on there right now with a four, three to $400 estimate or some, some ridiculous thing. Um, I think it's it's either on the USA or the or the uh, overseas page for live auctioneers. You'll find it. It's on there, and it looks exactly like this one, with a four four or five hundred dollar estimate. 
or three to five hundred dollar estimate. Here's one that had an eight to twelve hundred dollar estimate, and that's what it went for thirty two hundred and fifty. This is by Cornelis Pronk. He was a he was a European decorator who supplied designs uh, in the in the seventeen thirties uh, for a short period of time for custom pieces. And there's the famous Pronk jar at the uh, Peabody Essex Museum. Um, there is, is things appear in China trade collections all over the world. And as a result, these are highly desirable. And this was just a nine inch dish and ended up selling for $3,250, but very, very desirable for collector, very rare. And I don't think it was much of an overpayment. And then there was this, I had a number of inquiries about this thing and I thought it was a terrific little 18th century jar. Um, Eight to twelve hundred dollar estimate went for six hundred dollars on just two bids, and I think it's because the the form was the shape is a bit atypical. It does I've seen them before, but I, I think maybe the shape threw people off. I'm not sure what happened here, but I I I, I, I told one, one fellow that asked about. It, I said, but don't you know don't be put off if it goes for two or three thousand because it's a rare form. It's beautifully done. It did have a little repair up around the top here. Um, there's an areas that look like some restoration and that may have held it back. Maybe that's what kept it down. I don't know, but $600 was a no brainer for that. And then over here to this, um, we've seen these little guys before. We see them sometimes in pairs. I remember a few months ago, Brunks had them. Uh, lots of people get these. These are highly popular, highly desirable. These were also from the Tibor collection. Um, the He He Twins, they refer to them sometimes. Um, they're not terribly big. They're around five and a half inches tall or so. Uh, they were estimated at six to 800, which seemed perfectly within range. And um, they went for 300. And these are Kangxi. These are this was a very very good buy. I was kind of surprised they didn't date them. They should have dated them, because uh, these were nice. The, the 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 little lotus thing he's holding in his hand is broken off. There's something missing from it apparently. But the facial expressions on them are particularly good. Whenever you see these little biscuit figures, always check the facial expressions. Some of them are extremely expressive, like these. Others are not quite so. The the, the glaze dripped in a little bit, filled it in, so the sharpness of the facial. Uh, uh, aspects are not as strong as they could be but these were very nice and the yellow the amber glaze was particularly pretty on this very very glossy very well done so at any rate I, I thought this was a nice uh, a, a nice pair of figures and I think $300 of course was extremely reasonable all right and then getting over to the um, uh, the uh, bit amount uh, newsletter page uh, results for the week over here if you don't subscribe come over here Click the button and we'll let you know when the page updates. It's free. We, it's, it's, uh, we've done this. We've done this. Is a, look at that. For last week was 455 of these, of these weekly pieces. That's hard to believe. I remember when we started doing this. Everybody thought it was, it was a strange thing to do. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, we used to do it by email. We used to just email people directly. Um, every week we set like a page into their email that was full of stuff. And eventually the page got too big and um, uh, uh, it, was, it was having trouble getting transmitted even through Constant Contact, who we use for things. But there are some good things coming up um, um, this week. Um, we're going to go through some prices and some things that are on here um, that, are, that are coming up. Uh, let's see here. Um, we'll, we'll go back. Wait a minute. Messed it up. Um, these are on there right now. These will be on there for the rest of the, uh, until they close. They close next Thursday. Is this right? Something, something woke up our dog. April! Come here, April! <laughs> I think there's some kids out front. April! I think there's some kids outside. What time is it? It's 1 o'clock. Maybe some kids are coming home early. I don't know. They go down the street here. Um, um, they, they, they make a little noise sometimes. I think that's got her up. At any rate, uh, you all know April, the blonde dog. She's, she's, uh, she's always on duty. Um, anyway, is this. This is, really, this, is, this is from the Sangrila guys, the ceramics and collectibles. This is on eBay right now. It will be on the newsletter page. Is a really nice um, Chan Chi period Chong Chen um, uh, type uh, dish. It's a good size one too. It's about eight inches in diameter. This is a really nice looking, and they, oh, they've added a video. Some of these guys nowadays are doing videos. Let's see if they, uh, there we go. Um, nice old dish. There we go. Look at the back. There we are. 
That's what it should look like. And see how big it is. It's big. It's stout. It's got some. It's got some heft to it. Um, he's got it in his hand. You can tell by the size of his hand. Um, it's up to forty-two dollars now. This this should bring six hundred to a thousand. Um, uh, sometimes the, 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 this particular seller, they'll put things on their site and have them at a fixed price. And um, they're, they're pretty flexible on prices. They like to negotiate and hear from people. Um, so don't ever be put off by uh, the price they put on things. Um, they're just putting a price out there and then hoping you'll get a hold of them and, and you know, come to an agreement on, on a price. They sell good things. Uh, and they have this dish. This should bring, well, it should bring 1000 to $1,200. Um, or maybe a little more, but we'll see. But it's a, a, a good example. It's got the rain cloud uh, border and then the craggy trees that are so uh, typical of these export pieces to the Japanese market. And it's a uh, good color, good cobalt. It's got, it's, only, it's got six days left. It's only got three bids. It's up to $42. So check that out. And then this, a pair of orange sepia um, uh, uh, dishes. Um, this, the, these were a bargain. Again, uh, we had the two that sold at Stair for uh, $200, $100 a piece. Here have a pair and fits you. Nicely done. And they slipped through um, for 89 bucks for the two. Like, you know, like I always say, leave a bid. Always leave a bid. And I'm sure people looked at these and said, well, they're going to go for three or $400, so why bother? Because that's what they typically bring. They typically sell a plate plate like this typically sells for 150 to 200 dollars that's the standard range both of them went for 89 dollars and the shipping was very inexpensive from maryland to here and outside of boston it was just 12 bucks so they're not they're not gouging you on the back end with shipping either all right and then you have this this really nice uh, uh a it looks like a republic period vase uh iron red nicely done maybe from the 50s but beautifully done beautiful looking Face. What does the bottom of this look like? I looked at this a couple weeks ago, but I don't remember all the details of it. Uh, very, very nicely decorated. Beautiful shading. Uh, at any rate, everybody loved it. It went for $4,151 with, with its travel box. I love these old boxes because they have, often have um, a, a either. I've seen them with glass panels on them, so you can you can you can see them through the glass, or you can just or if it's a solid, you just take the panel off to display it, and then close it up so it doesn't get dirty. Um, I don't know. I don't know why they don't just take them out and put some flowers in the thing. Um, and then there was this. This this was listed as Chinese, and I threw it in the in the in the newsletter page because I know that most of you would know right away this is not a Chinese bronze. This is Japanese bronze, but it's a very nice one, and it looks to be like a late Edo or early Meiji period example. Um, here's a picture of the bottom of it, and uh, so forth. It's got an old repair. You often see these old repairs on the bottoms of Japanese bronzes because the base plates were often applied separately. They didn't do a very good job with them, and they sometimes got knocked loose. Uh, but at any rate, this was a good one. The photography is terrible, but the, but the piece was nice. Um, it's, it's too, it's too, the pictures are too... Put it on a table and take a picture. Don't shoot it in your hands. <laughs> it's, it doesn't work. Uh, but anyway, this was you see these bronzes with these high relief um, uh, figures and features on them, the feet and the, and the dragon and so forth. And uh, you should Im immediately think of Japan when, when they see them like this. This is not something you typically see on Chinese things. This was a nice bronze. And I think it was a good buy. It went for $403. Not a crazy price. Good looking thing. It was probably made as a brush pot. And um, or a small vase. They they say brush pot because why not? <laughs> it's close enough. Uh, and then on to this. This was a robe again. Robes, robes, and robes. Uh, Chinese robes are still holding up just fine. This one is quite similar to the one that that, that was sold uh, over at uh, 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 was it uh, uh, Heinemann's? I guess it was. Um, we looked at very very similar blue dragon. Um, uh, blue background with this gold dragon, nicely done. Uh, looks like the uh, part of the liner at the bottom might have been replaced at some point. Uh, that green business, but that's the the blue fabric you see on the insides of 99% of the robes floating around. Uh, good looking example, and uh, it ended up selling for seven thousand and ninety nine dollars. Which the other one sold for six thousand, but keep in mind it had a buyer's premium added onto it, which brought it up to about seventy five hundred eight thousand. And this one had no buyer's premium, and it sold for seven thousand. So maybe it was a slightly better buy, but um, not by much. The price was, the prices on silk dragon robes has gotten pretty tight. Um, uh, people that collect all know what they're worth, and they generally stay in that range unless there's something very unusual uh, to do with it. 
All right. Now, uh, things, other things that are going to be on the newsletter page this weekend is uh, 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 Kangshi uh, 0219. This is the seller over in Sweden. Um, it's got this nice looking uh, little Wanli plate on here with the, with the double deer and a uh, nice border, uh, shaped rim, soft palette. Um, should bring a few hundred dollars. It's up to $22 already, and it closes on Sunday. These will be on the newsletter page this week. And then this, this is a, a Migalari has this up, this very nice uh, blue and white celadon ground elephant handled vase. Um, looks like a late 19th or mid 19th century example, but nicely decorated. Um, how big is this? Oh, it's good size, 16 inches tall. It looks smaller, that's interesting. Um, when I first looked at this with the photo here, I, I thought, oh, you know, eight or 10 inches tall, maybe 16 inches. This is a big vase. Um, so check it out. Check the, check the condition. Make sure it's okay. But a very nice palette, nice objects. It's got, I like the fact they put a Ming table in there with scholars objects on it. And you have the vases and all the goodies and, and centerpieces with, with um, um, bulbs and peaches in them and so forth. And you have this nice vase on top with lotus flowers coming out of it, lotus leaves coming out of it. Very nice. And uh, what else? Oh, this, this, this is Bamboon. Um, and many of you know him, a, he's a, a good seller over in the UK. And he has this plate, it's a little over lit, but this is a nice piece of, uh, uh, a nice Ming tray. Here it is, uh, that's the back of it. Here's the corner of it, it's got a repair and a line in it. But this is a, a good one. This is good decoration, very finely painted. Beautiful decoration, and um, uh, so far it's uh, getting some attention, but not a lot. It's up to just um, what is that up to? Uh, uh, why did it say one hundred and forty-four dollars? Oh, okay, I thought it said fourteen dollars. Um, it's up. It's up there. It's got a couple of days to go. Should bring six or eight hundred, but a nice um, late Ming Dynasty uh, example because the colors are so good. The colors are great. The coloration is very unusual. Um, it, it's either late Jai Jing or Wan Li period, but really interesting. Really interesting. It's got a crack in it. That's the only thing. But boy, the artwork on that was great. And it's nice. It's a decent size. It's, what is it? Five by five or something? Um, it is six by six. There you go. Nice looking. Uh, and then over here to this, 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 this just popped up the last couple of days. Um, I don't know where it's been. I don't know how we missed it last week, but it, well, it closes Sunday. It might've been a seven day listing. Um, it closes on Sunday is this very nice, um, uh, copper red Mayping vase. And as you know, um, copper red Mayping vases, Lang Yao vases, they send them to refer to them as, but copper red's more appropriate, I guess, um, are, have been really popular lately. And judging by the bottom of this, with the way the foot is shaped, that it's got, again, you got that bluish tinge on the bottom and um, nice looking mouth. One side of it's got some, um, uh, some bloom running down the side from the firing process here. It goes light with the glaze pulled back a little. But this beautiful cherry red color that dominates it um, like this. Uh, very, very nice. Uh, how big is this? Ba -ba -ba. Six, seven inches in height. It's about right. Um, that's the range. These are usually not, you know, 15 or 16 inches. They, they, they tend to top out at around uh, uh, between five and a half, six inches and, and, and 11 inches or so. But at any rate, it's up to $476. It's an early 19th century one. I'm not convinced it's 18th century, but it certainly looks 19th, early 19th century. Um, the, the way this foot is done, it's a very nice white foot. It could be 18, late 18th. There's, there's no hard line between the two sometimes. But assume it's early 19th century, and it should bring 1500 to $2,500 anyway. But we'll see. Uh, it's, a, it's a very nice example, and it doesn't look like it has any damage. It's being sold by a seller in the UK, and his shipping is pretty reasonable. Uh, 69 bucks from there to here, um, which is fine. Um, and then this, uh, this uh, Yongshen pattern uh, export cup and saucer will be in the newsletter this week. Uh, very well-known pattern. You've seen them before. Uh, I've seen these at Christie's and Sotheby's. Um, and uh, they generally sell for between four and $500 for a cup and saucer set from this period in this pattern. It's a, it's a, it's, it is a known pattern. It's a pattern that's turned up before. And I've always liked the, the sort of grayish blue on the uh, uh, up here along the border. I think that's a very appealing color. And they have good pictures of the bottoms. There they are. You can see how big the cup is. It's a wine cup. 
Um, this isn't some big teacup or something, it's a wine cup. But very elegant, very delicate, um, very, very refined. And um, it's up to just $12. It closes on Monday. So g g get your stuff out. And then there's this. This closes in three days. Now, this is a nice little pot, and it's a rare thing. And there's no restoration and no cracks. And this is sold, I don't know the seller, M NM9696. They are in the UK. Uh, but this is a rare little pot. That is a nice example. Uh, unusual form. Well, no, uh, the decoration is sort of known, but the form and shape and the, and the, and the, and the cafe uh, glaze that's been added to the rim and all this is a nice little example. Very, very sweet little cup. It's not terribly big. You can see how big it is. It fits in your hand. But very fine quality, very fine quality paste on the bottom. And uh, it's, a, it's a late 18th century example. Uh, I think this is very nice. If you like great little objects in porcelain and unusual, if you collect export porcelain right away, you know this is a rare form. It's a rare shape. It's not a shape and style that you see often. Um, it's got three days to go. It's only up to $21. Um, what's the shipping? Shipping is peanuts from 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 London to here. It's uh, like like 21 bucks, uh, but that that's a very nice piece of porcelain. Really is, really is. It's a good piece of export ware. It's unusual. All right. So that pretty much covers it for the week. Um, I didn't mean to go on so long. I <laughs> I probably did. I haven't looked at the clock on this recording yet. But at any rate, it's fun. Um, check out the the other video we did this week on on decorating and interiors and. And uh, the, the virtue of collecting antiques and living with them in your life, I think it's, I, um, I truly believe um, it makes your life so much better. Um, and people that come to see you makes their lives better. And it's good for your children to be raised in a home with old things. Give them an appreciation and understanding of, of culture and where things come from. And uh, that's what we do here when we look at, the, at, at Chinese objects and try to understand them and, and um, evaluate them based on their quality and so forth and Japanese things and Korean things and whatever comes onto the market. All right. And it's always fun. It's always learning. All right. Have a great week. Have a great weekend. And we'll be back next week. we got a couple of uh, new videos we're working on. Check out the newsletter page at Bitamount. And uh, thanks again to so many of you who have subscribed to the uh, global pages. Oh, um, on the global pages, this is for global users. I meant I, I meant to say this at the beginning. Oh, well. Um, um, I, uh, in this week's video over on the global pages uh, that I did for, for you guys, um, I mentioned um, some possible redesigns to the global pages to make them, uh, I'm, I don't like the drop down windows. So I'm, I'm, we're working on ways maybe to streamline them into, into a separate uh, access bar and make some changes. And uh, if, you, if you see that and you look at it and you have an idea, uh, send us an email for it um, uh, at, uh, through the contact us section. Um, because we're gonna we're gonna re redesign it because it's getting it's getting bigger and bigger. Um, there's a lot so much material on there at times, and uh, we're trying to make it uh, as streamlined as possible and as visually easy to get to things as possible. All right, so um, uh, let me know about that. All righty, all right. I, you, I know you do. Uh, all right. Uh, have have a, have a again. Have a great weekend. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here if you haven't, and uh, see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you.